the Wooten Sisters. I'm Lorena. And I'm Patricia. And we're here tonight um, at the Reeds Refuge Center to talk about the Safe City Project. What's up with us? <laughs> Jump into the interview and go ahead and see exactly what the guys are going to be talking about tonight as we really dive in uh, how the project got started and exactly what they expect to get out of it this season. Hi, I'm Lorena Wooten. I will be here today to talk about your new project that you guys have coming up. Uh, the Safe City Project, one of the songs on the Safe City Project. What's up with us? Mm -hmm. I totally yeah. forgot that, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's just go around and introduce yourself, and then we'll talk right about, get right into the project. Uh, my name is L. Ryan, and I'm a, a hip hop artist. Um, Jay LaVita, I'm a singer songwriter. I'm AJ Harding, I'm a hip hop artist slash pastor. My name is Fred Reed, <laughs> entrepreneur, singer, songwriter, artist. The giant. Uh, man, I don't yeah. got time to name them all, but. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm Jay Focus. I'm an artist, songwriter, educator. Are you a school teacher? I work in the schools. So I'm going to do my homework. Yeah. Okay. Let's <laughs> talk about the project. <laughs> Mr. Reed, I'm sorry. I'm trying to encourage kids to do their homework. Mr. Reed. Well, Fred excellent Reed. job at it. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about this project and how you birthed it and what you expect to come, um, to come out of this project. Safe City Project. Um, of course, music is shaping society right now. And uh, Safe City Project is a positive, uh, it's a positive um, musical project at gears towards uh, kids speaking out against guns, drugs, and violence, and even young adults and as well as adults. Um, what we're hoping that we can bring awareness to how you know we can take care of our community better, mm -hmm. how we can look out for one another, stop some of the violence, stop some of the murder and the killing. You know, uh, just, that's just the hopes of this project. Okay. Now I watched a couple of your other projects and normally you uh, incorporate children in your project. This yeah. one you did not. Any reason why you didn't add any children into this project? Well, like I said, I wanted to cater to the, to the entire family. I mean, we all live in this community, children, mm -hmm. adults, young men, young women. And I think it's important that us as men, mm -hmm. you know, who are, the, who are the leaders in the community? I think that people need to see the, the young black men mm -hmm. out here doing something positive for the community. You know, and the, there is, it's a lot of artists up here. You know, a lot of these guys are well known around and not just in the city of Wilmington, but all over, you know, and I think you know, I appreciate them coming to be a part of this project. I think it's very important to be impactful. Okay, good. Now, I've met you before. I've seen some of your work before, and of course I know you, Pastor, but some of you others I don't know. So tell me a little bit about when you got the call to be on the project. What were your thoughts and what made you really uh, say, yes, I'll do it? Anyone can answer that. Um, with me, it was it, it hit home personally because I am a, a gunshot victim. So uh, when I got a call, you know, I had I, it's like I had to. Um, I just want to. I just want to see my community do better, you know, as a whole. So you know, it's just got to start with us. Yeah. Um, to piggyback off what he said, you know, it hit home for me. Uh, I lost a lot of friends, you know, on the streets, in the streets of uh, Wilmington, you know, in Delaware in general. And uh, so when he, you know, when he came to me, to me with the opportunity, I had to take it just because that's a message I've always been wanting to get out you know, from the rip anyway. So mm -hmm. I felt like this was a perfect platform for it. Okay. Oh, for me, um, you know, um, I was excited to be a part of it, um, you know, because my passion is to empower people, to empower um, children. Uh, I work with children, of course, and, um, and we got to catch them at, at that age and kind of mold them and kind of, you know, just instill into them, you know, the, the you know, just, you know the unity and the coming together and 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 just looking out for each other so when Fred asked me to be a part of it I was just excited um, to be a part of it absolutely um, I was honored to even be asked to be a part of the project you know, I've been an artist for a while and um I think it aligned well with the branding and the music that I already make as far as trying to make real music that will penetrate to the generations beyond just ours you know what I mean and actually leaving a message there for them to be able to receive and hopefully reciprocate the same energy as they go over. Okay. So I hear a lot about this city 
now is anyone expecting this song to really reach the, the masses, the nations, other cities? Do you think other cities can relate to this music? Mm-hmm. I mean, I got a chance to watch the project. I had to like go past in the headlock and like kick in the <laughs> door and you know run past Fred, but it was a really good project. Do you think that other cities can relate to this message? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, sure. especially what's going yes, on sir. all over the country. With it's a global, with global problem. The shootings in schools, in the streets. Right. Like we have a gun problem in this in this country. But I think that's without a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think we're educated on why these issues are are permeating to the, to the inner city when right. they don't generate the the, the the money to buy these guns. You know right. what I mean? Or the, the own places that have these weapons accessible. So. So outside of the music, what other things do you guys do in the community that really helps uh, just change the narrative and really help help the youth in this community or in your community, in community? Um, I mean, I'm actually a motivational speaker. Like I go around to middle schools and high schools and. Um, talk about gun violence like I talk um perform the song guns down that I got and then I tell them my story you know it's it, it's it's not the fact like I was in the safety of my own home type of thing like so just imagine if you put yourself in a situation where you don't really need to be in mm. so I just give them that outlook and give them you know that that outlet to come talk to me if they ever need me whatever the case is um, I do a lot of artist development um for singers and, and rappers who want to you know better themselves and take their, their career more seriously and just show them that, you know, they don't have to be on the streets to find a career and to find something they love to do. You know, turn it into, you know, a passion into an actual job and make money from it. And with me, I'm um, one of the head counselors, head uh, mentors here at the Reeves Refuge Center, man, where we work with um, just hundreds of kids in a day that's, you know, um, have their own problems. And it's just a blessing to be able to be here and to redirect them and to instill some positive um, qualities on the inside of them so they can grow up and be, you know, uh, successful teenagers all the way up into adults, man, in our society where they can be able to make a change and make an impact. So it just do my heart uh, good being able to be a part of the Reese Refuge Center where we are uh, touching the lives of so many youth, man. So so that's what I do outside of, you know, being a pastor as well. So. Wow. Man, there's so much I can say. Um... I mean, I'm, I'm from the Riverside Projects, and I was all, always told that I wasn't going to be nothing, wasn't going to do anything. Uh, that motivated me, you know, to be everything that they said, you know, that I wasn't going to be. Uh, being an entrepreneur in this, in Wilmington, and I have two child care centers. Reach Refuge Center is a nonprofit organization that uh, that was birthed through, through a vision I had through music, you know, singing as a a young kid, you know, being able to tour from here to London at 18 and 19 years old, coming from the projects, you know, what really would had birth uh, Reed Refuge Center. So I figured if music could help a person like me who had a bad attitude and was street oriented, and that's all I knew was the street, if it helped change my life, that it could change other young people's lives, you know, and, and perhaps, you know, even if you don't make it in the music field, that it can perhaps make it and enable you to help help you run your own business. Different ideals teach you communication. It, te- it taught me so much, you know, being involved with music, you know, and now having an after school program for free. I mean, you know, we've been running this program here for five years for free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being able to offer yeah. it for free. Wow. You know, mm-hmm. you know, when I was coming up, you know, to get in a studio, you couldn't afford it. You know, mm-hmm. you couldn't afford to go to a studio. Now it's a studio. Uh, you, where you teach, where you learn in engineering, where you learn in musical in- instrumentation lessons, where you learn in vocal lessons, where you learn in media photography, mm-hmm. uh, going out and feeding the community every other weekend. We go out and feed the homeless. Um, it's, it's just so much street cleaning. You know, we do so many different things here, and I, you know, and it's a passion of mine. And I love what I do. I love to see the smile on people, you know, on children's faces as well as adults. Yeah. You know, because I think you got to service the whole family to really help the community because we all live here. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Now. I'm into movements. You know, when you start something, you should have something that follows up with it. So once you drop this, once it's, you know, it drops and everyone is, is like nodding their head and rocking to it, what are you going to offer to the city to have them say, you know, what about us? So are you going to teach? Is it going to be classes that go along with it? Is it going to be other programs that go? I mean, are you going to go do speaking engagements? Or, you know, what are you going to do to offer? Like, what what about us? Because some people don't know what they can do. Right. Now, I think I think what's going to happen uh, from this project is going to open many doors for us to do a lot of, we're going to have a lot of dialogue at high schools, just like Elrod. These are, these are some of the things that he's doing. These are some of the things that um, Jay Focus is doing, as well as mm-hmm. Mr. AJ. And I think it's going to open the door for a lot of major dialogue. And I think... Um, for us to get out, you know, as a unit, you know, as a team mm-hmm. and go out and talk to different high schools, you know, the different community centers. I think it's going to be important. 
Cause these guys here, you know, I look at them, they like dope artists, you know? Mm -hmm. And what made me reach out to them was I, I checked them out and did some stuff, seen some videos on Facebook. I'm like, wow, these guys are awesome, you know? Yeah. And you know, I said, let me try, let me reach out to them. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just that easy, you know, calling them, bringing them in and talking to them about the project. And not only, not only did they perform on What's Up With Us, but these guys wrote on this particular song. You know, everybody that you've seen on there, they wrote their own verses. Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't just me, but us coming together, you know, it's just like mixing up, you know, it was just the ingredients, you know, that, that birthed uh, What's Up With Us. And one of the things I do realize is that, um, y'all didn't know, I know, so I'm not gonna hold it against you, that I am a rapper too. Well, sure like and rap. I started like to rap now. I like rap. That's not the music they got yeah, going like on right school, here. I don't know what this okay. is they got going on right now. Too far, big but man. I learned to find, I found my voice pepper. in my music or in writing. So I'm a poet now, you know, you okay. didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And um, so tell me how music kind of changed you and shaped you into who you are today. Um, I, me personally, like it, it gave, I mean, I already had a voice in me, but it gave, it gave the power to give everybody else a voice. Like everything that I say, you know, you can visualize what I'm saying. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And it gives people the courage to, to, to step up and actually speak about some things that they ain't had the courage to before. Um, and it made me like a little bit more outgoing because like if I'm just meeting some people, I'm like very well preserved. Like I don't, I don't really, but you know, music helped me get out of my, get out of my shelter. Yeah. Um, for me, when I was younger, uh, Around Christmas time, my mom would have us. We would have to perform to be able to open up our gifts. We have to do some kind of performance. So um, that's what really got me into music. So like that boosted my confidence to a whole other level. So when it came to you know just speaking to somebody or presenting myself, I always knew how to carry myself because I always had that confidence of just being in front of people. So that kind of just trickled over to the music, and then just me on the daily, you know what I mean? How is how I carry myself. You were that cute little baby everybody brought out. Look, yeah. look at my son, come out here, come do a dance for everybody. Yeah, you that little, little baby. Bow -wow when I had the braids and all that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, for me, uh, music shaped me. Uh, it, it really depends on what era, what era <laughs> you know, because back in the day, I ain't gonna tell my age, but back in the days, you know, I grew up, I was a big Nas, big Tupac fan. So right. I kind of grew up, um, in that era and but back then um without having the knowledge or the wisdom that i have now because you know back then i was in the streets and hustling and 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 just doing my thing and then when i heard tupac talk about thug passion you know what i mean first thing i'm hearing them lyrics oh tupac said thug passion this is how you do it you take the hennessy you take the alexa you mix it up and we at the liquor store you know what i'm saying so coming up in that era you know music uh shapes you to think negative back then but as i mature and got older you know I, I start saying you know what i have this gift of music um you know you can catch me always on the corner rapping me and fred be together and you're like yeah, shorty rocks hit something and i'm on the corner so i was always before shorty the rocks. people yeah <laughs> that was my rap name shorty rocks You're fitting too right <laughs> shorty rocks coming shorty up rocks. so you know i always <laughs> was able to be before people uh and speaking but now i'm able to take uh that same uh genre of, of music which is rap and really uh, turn it around to 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 impact somebody's life um, in a positive way more than allowing them to leave my presence thinking something negative and going and doing it. So um, now that I'm older, I just use it. I'm more wiser, and I just use it to to, to impact people's life and hopefully to make a change in their life. So. Yeah. And I know you, Mr. Fred, you like R and B. You know, you an R and B man, so got like thirty kids. You know, that's that, that's that love making music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love making that type of music. Yes, sir. Talk about how music came. I, I mean for me personally, I, I love I love the expression, you know, on people's faces mm -hmm. when I perform, when I sing a song. I love making people feel good. You know, because if they're you know, if I'm giving something good to them, I'm feeling good when I'm doing it. So I want them to feel exactly how I feel. You know, music gave me confidence. You know what I mean? I would rather sing, you know, I'd rather have a mic in my hand singing than to talk. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I, I love I love doing, you know, and uh, even now, even at the age I am now, you know, I got a new project coming out. We'll talk about that at a later time. But mm -hmm. 
it's, it's some more uh it's I, called, it, it, it'd yeah. be some more uh, some more r b coming out, out coming out of it okay so, mm, i think it's crazy yeah. okay i'm looking forward <laughs> to that now we have safe city project and most of you are from uh the city or a city somewhere mm -hmm. so you grew up um where you saw you know loved ones lost and you saw you know crime happening um how did you make it out of those situations and still stand to be the men that you guys are today somebody pray for me yeah <laughs> they pray so i can say you know, yeah. i just think um i'm in agreement you know i was able to uh to make it to that age where i can make better decisions you know i was fortunate enough to to make it through and, and then i just think it's a different day and time so i just think when i was coming up i think it was more unity where your neighbor could, you could help raise you your neighbor would tell you the right things to do you know and then we didn't have to worry about fighting your mom for correcting you mm -hmm. it's a little different now yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and that's a that's a great question and I, I me personally i think i can be here all day don't coming from that aspect which i won't you know what i mean but <laughs> but i can agree with mr fred uh reed said uh you know definitely somebody somebody prayed for me you know, somebody prayed for me, and because of the prayers, you know, we we here, we here, and we are able to give back and to share our experience with the next generation. Hopefully, they won't follow in our same footsteps. Yeah. Having a strong mother, I was raised in a single parent household, and just seeing my mom get up and bust her ass every day, and instill the trust and the belief that I was going to make the right decision while I was out here, unchecked at times. Uh -huh. That just made me always want to make the right decision, always want to make her proud, always want to put her in a place where she could be elated that I'm doing well out here and not doing something that's going to cause my detriment or the detriment of other people. And we all slip and fall, you know what I mean? We all Absolutely. have times where we don't make the greatest decisions, right. but I think having that foundation of knowing what's right and what's wrong instilled in me, that, that helped me to get to where I'm at now. That's real. Wow. I mean, I got my ass beat. I got my ass beat, so uh, I think I didn't want to get my ass beat no more. So, <laughs> but nah, but um, I always loved music. I think that kept me out of trouble. I always took it very seriously. <laughs> so uh, I never really wanted to. Uh, I didn't want to lose that. I guess I always wanted. I had a goal to be a superstar, and if I got locked up or something, I just couldn't do that. You know. So I just think it was um, having a strong support system. Um, and that just kept me, you know, motivated. I ain't never want to see, you know, see them let me fail and everything. You know I mean, so I just, I just kept pushing. I mean, making the right decision every day. So I never want to disappoint the family. So we could argue why our cities are unsafe. You know, so so many things people have of so course. many reasons of why <laughs> our cities are unsafe and why we see as much crime as we see and why our children are killing each other. Um, and one of the biggest things that we hear nowadays is lack of education. Uh, tell, talk about that a little bit about how we have a lack of education in the homes with the parents with the children and what you think might be some of the cause for um, our cities being unsafe right now distraction mm. everybody's distracted yes I mean I work with kids like I said for over 12 years and my first job was working with children and just seeing the dynamic change in the families from the mothers or the fathers always being there to take care of them you know what I mean you are seeing children well kept you are seeing them being forced to read like it's not a question you want Come, you want to come to where you're supposed to come, you want to do your work, you want to read, and just seeing that kind of fall off. And not even seeing that same dynamic with the family where there's people fighting over who want to pick up the child. Right. It's yeah. like they're a burden. Wow. You know what I mean? As opposed to being a, being happy to even have somebody to go get. I know people who lost their children out here who would do anything just to have somebody to hold. Uh -huh. To be able uh -huh. to, to pour yeah. into, you know what I mean, sure. and love. And, and a lot of us don't appreciate what we have or who we have until right. we, not, we can't pour into them. Though. I, I think too um, lack of communication um, so much technology somebody always got a phone in their hand iPads in their hand um, even when, even when you go to eat at the dinner table you know everybody's in their own little areas right you know instead of eating together you know I think coming together and having dinner together with your children mm -hmm. gives you an opportunity to talk about their day and then you know now you have children you know off on their own where they're actually making adult decisions you they know to so much. They, they see so many different things oh. online you uh -huh. know i think social media can be a positive thing but for the most part it's, it's really it's a lot of negative things that happen they learn a lot of negative stuff and i think also uh just the mindset 
of a lot of um, parents, and 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 in its um, day and age, man, we have a lot of, of, of babies raising babies, and uh, a lot of parents uh, instead of uh, correcting um, their children and putting them in their place, they want to be their best friend, and you got parents going out partying to the clubs with their kids, and it's just a whole mindset. Of, of 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 this generation of parents um, that I have seen have have really shifted and really changed, and they doing more so to try to fit in than to really um, be that parent. And then um, just just speaking from just the kids that we get here, you know, uh, we have them eight nine hours out of yeah. the day. So when they with us, we instilling those positive things, those morals, those values in them. But the problem or the conflict. Um, that we have what a lot of them is that when they leave us and go home the parents is not reiterating what we have been teaching them here so they go home to a whole another um Set environment yeah uh -huh. you know what i mean that yeah. that's really transforming their mind in the way they think as well i, I think um, it's that and i also think you know a lot of parents are in survival mode you know let's say that they do go home but sometimes mom or, or whoever the single parent is they, they super tired Mm -hmm. I know I work a lot, so I understand, you know, a lot of them just trying to keep food on the table and pay the bills. And and, and by, being as though they have to be going so much, a lot of times they don't have the communication with their child to even interact with them at, with them at all. Right. Um, I mean, I can go, I, I can pull out so many different avenues. I can be a conspiracy theorist on this end, and I can, you know, be a realist on this end. But um, I think, for me, I think a lot of the reasons why a lot of these kids have a hard time growing up and making it out is because what we all got right here and that's a passion mm -hmm. you know and i feel like even if as an adult mm -hmm. if you don't have a, a passion for something mm -hmm. yeah. you lost like you lost your whole life mm -hmm. because you always right. trying to fill that void of like right. you feeling it with relationships or the streets who, who you think are your friends you know what i'm saying so like i feel like very true man. that's yeah, that's very one true, thing man. that you know, that holds a lot of people back. Mm -hmm. um, me, I think, you know, just being around like the schools and middle schools and high schools, like kids think they know it all. They ain't no telling, they ain't no telling them what to do. Oh yeah, I know. No, you like 12, what are you talking? You don't know, you haven't lived life. You mean like, granted, I don't know what's going on at home, but you, you, haven't, you haven't lived there. So you can't tell me that you know everything right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and my thing is like, the parents is not. I feel as though they they don't spend like enough time with them. Like you feel me? Like you said, babies raising babies, um, and I just think that parents play a big part in their child's life without them even knowing it. So we I've heard all of you, most of you, all of you, mention your mothers, and me being a single mom, um, I was not a single parent because my son had a strong father figure. His dad was always present, and it helped me tremendously raise a young man. How many of you had your fathers in your lives, and how many of you um, didn't? How did that affect you? Well, that affected me in a negative way because my father uh, wasn't there um, like he was supposed to be, and um, neither was my mother like that. My grandmother raised me. My mother... Uh, you know, had a crazy addiction. I mean, she was strung out on crack, on heroin. Um, there'd be nights where I, you know, go out to try to find her. Me and Fred had a couple experiences where we putting her in a car, she kicking the windows almost out of his car, trying to get out um, to feed that addiction. So it had a negative impact on my life and it made me gravitate towards the streets and, and, and to get in some things that I, I believe I would have avoided if I had, uh, both of my parents um, in my life, and you know, you know, you know, when it comes to that, to me, it's, it's really a sensitive and a touchy situation because me and my mother's relationship was real tight and was like uh, sisters and brothers. You know what I mean? And then, you know, I'm here working and you know, uh, empowering the kids here at the Reese Refuge Center, and then, you know, I get a call. Uh, we just found your mom dead in a, an abandoned house. You know what I mean? So, so that really, really impacted my life. But at the same time, it, it, it gave me a drive to really want to pour inside of our young people and really change, change that. And even if their fathers or mothers not there, they know that when they in the care of myself, Mr. Reed, Mr. Hashim, and all of the Reed's Refuge staff, they get loved on, they get poured into, 
and to the point where now they I'm not Mr. AJ, he's not Mr. Reed, we Uncle AJ, Uncle Fred, <laughs> oh, Uncle Hashim. So, you know what I mean? So so it, it, it really can mess you up in, the, in, in in a major way if you don't get yourself together, uh, change your focus and, and get back on track. And thank God, unfortunately, I was able to get back on track and, and now I'm able to empower um, young people. So, yeah. As you were telling that story, watching the other four grown men, a little teary eye, even listening to that, because that had to be, you know, really hard to go through. And even, you know, as somebody watching, because I grew up with you, yeah, you taught us love. Like yeah. you taught us love. Yeah. Um, anybody else want to share there? Um, I didn't have a father growing up. I ain't have a, a male role model that I could really turn to that I believe, you know what I mean, truly cared about my well being or my progression. But um, there were programs like um, African National Rights of Passage that I was involved in that had a lot of good, positive fathers involved. Young groups we used to be involved in that. Um, uh, Alan, Al, uh, the, the Twin Poets. But um, my my label is called God Ain't, and um, I'm not I'm not of any religion per se, but I believe in the divine order. I believe in order for the household to be run correctly that you need. God involved. You need man, woman, and child. You need that to be, in, in order to have less chaos, you need to run your household right. That's and I don't, I don't think a lot of these kids have even seen that in right. practice, mm-hmm. let alone to have it as a part of their everyday life. And mm-hmm. who, who doesn't need a role model? Who doesn't need that standing role model in their household every day to show them this is right, this is, this is wrong? As a young boy, I know I, I needed that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think I would have made as many of the wrong turns as I made had mm-hmm. I had that. Absolutely. That's real. Well, we don't have enough time to answer for everybody, but we're going to move on because I want to get right back to the project. I wanted people to get a chance to get to know who you were, where you came from, and your backgrounds. But let's just dive right back into this project. Is there anything any of you um, really want to speak of, speak on a project that maybe when you started off on this project, you weren't sure um, it was going to make that kind of impact on you? Like Anybody want to talk about the project in itself? I pretty, I pretty much wanted to uh, involve everybody that was willing to be involved. You know, I reached out to several people and I think the more the more the merrier. You know, because I think we all are, you know, dealing with, you know, with the violence, you know, in some way, shape or form that we all are dealing with loved ones being shot or knowing someone that's been shot, knowing someone that's addicted to drugs. Um, you know, at the end of the day our you know, our youth are, you know, they're our future. You know, and I, and I think it's, it's so important that you know we focus more so on the youth, and, and they're they're our, they're our next they're our, they're our, our, our leaders in our generation, yeah. and I think it's so important right now that we you know that we really focus on them. So, what are we releasing this project? Well, um, <laughs> we have official uh, launch date um, for the premiere that's going to be um, April the twenty fifth, okay. um, from six to eight, and that's going to be on Market Street Mall at the uh delaware history delaware museum. history mm-hmm. museum yes sir okay. on on april okay. 25th would you all be present ask absolutely. for a friend well, yes absolutely i don't, I don't know Everyone. about i might be in a wheelchair but i i'm gonna definitely be there yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, i got surgery next week okay you know we're gonna push you oh, on yeah, in yeah 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 we're gonna we got it we're gonna carry him we got him carry him like a prince got you don't drop me <laughs> so, so is, is there a call for for the um? It's gonna be free. It's free, free, free for the public. Free event. Uh, should be some you know some finger foods there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe some guest speakers and um, okay. perhaps uh, we talk about performing. Will there be a panel discussion afterwards where we can actually sit and talk with you? A panel discussion afterwards, where we can actually sit and talk with you guys to ask questions concerning the project. I, I think. I mean, I think that's a great idea. A great idea. You know, wasn't thought about. I thing. thought of it. But thank yeah, you. Thank, <laughs> you. thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. She want to host. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you need us there, we're yeah, Bella. Yeah, yeah. Who is this? Yeah. Bella want to come and host yeah. the panel discussion. Yeah, you and we told the mic. Yeah, yeah, I bet you dressed late in the photo. So there you have yeah. it yeah. live. Yeah, yeah. 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 Heard what she said. She'll be there. It's gonna be from six to eight. We will be there from six to eight. Hosted by the Wooten sisters. Yeah, we're excited. Okay, so any last minute. Uh, yeah, we do got a last minute artist that's on here. That just showed up. So this was asked from the, um, from, the, the cheap, from the cheap seats, no, from the audience, <laughs> and it is: What method do you guys use to keep the lines from the children from being blurred when it comes to real life, the music, social media, and their surround, and their what they're surrounded by daily? Um, 
think you got to be honest with children nowadays. They see so much and exposed to so much through media literacy. I also teach media literacy courses, so okay. for them to understand, I, I do everything, jack all trades. Okay. All right, to really understand from their level of perception, you have to you have to think that they only have what they see. They only have what they're being shown. So if, you, if you're not if you're not giving them the yeah. proper interpretation, or at least preparing them with the right frame of reference to where this is, whatever we're speaking about is then they're only going to take what they're being shown mm -hmm. if the parents aren't telling the kids this is right this is wrong they're going to look for their friends mm -hmm. you know what i mean oh this is what we're doing this is what we're doing and that's that's kind of how kids work so i think the most important thing to do is to be honest with them and try to answer their questions okay. instead of just trying to keep the, the negative stuff out of their reach because it's, it's, it's apparent every yeah, day they're gonna look for it's it. yeah. everywhere yeah. Yeah. teach them consequences yeah mm -hmm. or the choices Sometimes you gotta let them learn too. You gotta yeah. let them just go out there and fall on their face and then come back and be like, well, yeah. I told you. you know as long I mean? as you watch it from the porch. Like, don't yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. 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 fall on your face nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, be, uh, be locked uh, up and dead. Just like, take a little bump and bruise. Mm -hmm. You, know? you want to get the head knocked off. Put that bug in your yeah. first. Yeah, absolutely. You know? but I think it's even giving them real life examples. Um, Because. Like you're saying, a lot of the social media and stuff, that it's all gimmicks. Uh -huh. It's everything's built up to portray a certain image. And a lot of that behind the scenes is not even what's going on. Uh -huh. So they're they're being deceived in that aspect already up front. Uh -huh. So it takes somebody that's consistent, that, that will push into them, you know what I mean? And show them, like, this is a day-to-day -day thing. It's not just a get hype one time kind of thing. Like, you really got to walk this stuff out. Yeah. Wow. So I heard, I heard the, um, again, I keep saying this, but I watch it. I'm so excited. I hope I get like the release to on my TV show first. But as you guys all were writing your piece for this project, how close was this piece to your lifestyle, what you witnessed, what you've lived, how much of it was that was real to you, or did you just write for the project? Everything that's in my verse is 100% true. Like what? It was Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. So it came just packed, that came from your soul? You, you, actually, you can really hear it. You can yeah. hear it in the piece. It sounds very... With us. You're the passion. Right. It, was really, it was a lot of passion. That's a question that's, you know, you got to answer personally. I got a little teary eye and I'm crying. <laughs> that's right. I think we become so numb to what we see on an everyday basis that we need things like Something this to numb. kind of yeah. mm -hmm. move our eyes back open. Like, mm -hmm. yo, you can be effective. Mm -hmm. You have to choose to be effective. Mm -hmm. You got to choose to be a leader. You got to choose to stop oh, following sure. behind everything that's presented to you as being something that's worth following because it's not like you mm -hmm. said half the stuff we see online is fake or it's propagated to be mm -hmm. presented in a certain way for you to receive it right. like yeah. yourself, looking yeah. even at the election the whole election was, well, was propagated you know yeah, what i mean sure. and, wow Absolutely. if adults don't understand how do we how do we mm. how do we expect children to understand mm -hmm. if adults don't understand what wow. they're being fed is the truth wow. You know See, the school teacher be taking me off course. I wanted to jump in there, but I'm going to get yelled at. I'll just stay on topic on the project. Mm -hmm. We're going to get back to that because that was good. Cause it's, 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 about, it's about the trauma. You know, it's about trauma oh, it and, and, the, and the trauma. Right. But even with saying that, when I, I grew up in the hip hop era, like mm -hmm. most of you, I know you know if you're my age. Like, maybe not you, but. Uh, I you love hip hop. You know, I was a rapper first. I love it. So even with that, hip hop changed the culture and it helped us with our trauma. Mm -hmm. So how do you think the music today, even this piece right now, will help the children with with the uh, trauma that they're dealing with? That I think a it's question. a reality check for them. Yeah. I, I think it's 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 going to impact them in such a way where they they stop and and think like, wow. What in the answer? You know. What's going on with me? Yeah, there's so much contrast, you know, from mm -hmm. what they hear on the radio. Mm -hmm. That it's like it's full opposite. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, Excuse me. Take them out the hood, little well, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's like that when we get together. You know? it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's not know. about just making music. This is not instantaneous, my, though. This vibe, other, this vibe, yeah. click instantaneous. This is not my first rodeo. I was saying how you guys yeah, we, all. Uh, jail so well yeah. together and then to find out that you all don't really i guess know each other personally it's a few of you guys yeah. okay so. so um as we wrap this up and as we end i want you guys just to all go around and just end out with um if you could say something to your younger you what would it be start the hard work now what do you turn it? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say stuff over there. I had to think about that. You got to think about it? Yeah, Cause you ain't that far from it, huh? Yeah, right. I know. I just got here. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, school teacher. I would say, um, don't let up. No matter what you do, persevere. I would say you can do it. I would say no matter how hard it gets, you can make it. I would say keep God first in everything you do. Uh, find your passion and question everything. I can say mine again. You can say yours again. Start the hard work now. Right. <laughs> Word. Yeah. Like it's that. easy to it's, it's, it's easy to do yeah. the not hard stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's more of an accomplishment when you do the hard push stuff. through it. Yeah. That's good. Um, I just what say you know keep your head up. You know never put your chin down. You need for nothing. Don't ever let nobody tell you what you can or can't do. And you can do yeah. it over for real. Friends else. and family. Mm -hmm. Family else. can get crazy. <laughs> And I would say, rumble, young girl, rumble. Because you got a fight in this life, right? That's right. So, I was such a pleasure to be here. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me.